Choo Choo and Friends in Story Time. <laughs> Long ago, there lived a little brother and sister whose names were Hansel and Gretel. They lived with their father and stepmother in a tiny cottage at the edge of a forest. Hansel and Gretel's father was a woodcutter. He used to chop trees in the forest. He didn't earn very much money from his work, so the family had very little to eat. Hansel and Gretel's stepmother did not like the children. She thought they ate too much and that caring for them was too much work. One night, she complained to Hansel and Gretel's father. I am fed up with your children. You need to leave them in the woods. I can't do that. They are my children. Of course you can. I'll show you how. Tomorrow at dawn, we'll take them into the forest and leave them there. Hansel was still awake, and he heard everything his stepmother had said. Later that night, Hansel snuck out of the house and picked up some shiny white pebbles that were sparkling in the dark. At dawn the next day, Hansel and Gretel's stepmother called out to them. Your father and I are going to the forest to chop wood. You children are coming with us. Here's a loaf of bread, in case you get hungry. As they walked into the forest, Hansel secretly dropped the pebbles he had to mark the path. When they arrived deep in the heart of the forest, the children's father and stepmother split off to chop some wood. We are going to chop wood. You two must wait here until we return. Yes, Mother. The kids spent the whole day alone in the forest. As night approached, Hansel and Gretel's father and stepmother had not returned. Hansel, I'm starting to get really scared. When are mother and father going to come back to take us home? I don't think they're coming back, Gretel. But you don't have to worry. I'll get us home. The pebbles Hansel had dropped on the ground were sparkling in the dark, and the kids were able to follow them all the way back to their house. Their father was delighted to see them. Hansel and Gretel, thank goodness you are safe. I am sorry. I'll never leave you alone again. <laughs> A few days later, Hansel and Gretel's father went to the town to repair his axe, and Hansel and Gretel were left alone in the house with their stepmother. 
<sighs> now that their father is far away, this is the perfect time for me to get rid of those brats. The evil stepmother ordered the children out of the house. Come on, you. We're going to have a picnic in the forest. A picnic? Now? Hansel didn't trust his stepmother. He secretly snatched a loaf of bread and hid it away. As they walked into the forest, Hansel dropped breadcrumbs on the ground behind him. Once they were deep inside the forest, their stepmother looked at them harshly and said, You two wait here. I'll come back in a little while. The children waited, but their stepmother didn't come back. It grew dark, and Gretel again started to feel very afraid. Hansel, let's go home. I'm scared. We need to wait until morning, Gretel. I left a trail of breadcrumbs, but... We won't be able to see them until morning when it's brighter. When the sun rose, Hansel and Gretel went looking for the breadcrumbs, but they couldn't find them anywhere. Oh no! The birds and the mice must have eaten the breadcrumbs. Uh, how will we go home now? Hansel and Gretel walked and walked through the forest, hoping to find someone who could help them. After some time, Hansel and Gretel came across a marvelous house. It was made of gingerbread and decorated with chocolates, gumdrops, and a bunch of other sweets. Look at that house, Hansel. It's made of our favorite sweets. Mmm, it looks so yummy. The two children were so hungry that they broke off big pieces of the house and started eating them. An old woman came out of the house. She smiled when she saw Hansel and Gretel. You poor children. You must be very hungry. Come in. I'll give you some hot milk to drink. Hansel and Gretel went into the old woman's house, where she fed them very nicely. Drink as much as you like, children. Don't be shy. There's plenty. <laughs> When Hansel and Gretel had finished, they told the old woman that they wanted to go home. Thank you for feeding us. Can you tell us how we can go home now? The old woman laughed. Home? Never! You two are staying here so that I can eat you up. <laughs> huh? Poor Hansel and Gretel. The old woman had trapped them. By the time the children realized that the old woman was a child-eating witch who had built a house of sweets to trap them, it was too late. The old witch locked Hansel up in a cage. 
You stay here, boy, until you are plump enough for me to eat. <laughs> the witch then turned to Gretel. <laughs> you, my dear, work for me now. She made Gretel cook and clean and wash and scrub. In the mornings, the old witch would check to see if Hansel was plump enough to eat. Show me your finger, Hansel. Let's see how plump you are. Knowing the old witch didn't see well, Hansel would trick her by holding out a chicken bone. Ah, you are still too skinny. One morning, the witch was feeling very hungry. Angrily, she called out to Gretel. Gretel, today I am going to eat Hansel for breakfast. Fill up the big pot with boiling water. I will make a nice Hansel soup. Huh? Poor Gretel. She didn't know what to do. <laughs> she knew she had to save Hansel and so thought of a plan as she was putting the pot of water to boil. After some time, the old witch came to see if the water in the pot was boiling. Is the water boiling yet? I'm ready to eat. Um, I'm not sure. I can't see inside the pot. It's too high for me. The witch was so eager to eat Hansel that she climbed up on the stove and peeped inside the pot. Clever little Gretel then pushed the old witch into the pot with all her might. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah! The old witch fell into the boiling water and Gretel closed the lid. She then unlocked the cage and let Hansel out. The old witch is gone, Hansel. We can go home now. Hooray! Not only was the witch gone, but Hansel and Gretel found a pot full of gold coins in the witch's house. We'll be able to buy plenty of food with this. After walking for a very long time, Hansel and Gretel finally found their way out of the forest. When they reached home, their father was waiting for them. Children, I'm so happy to see you. Thank goodness you've come back. I've kicked your stepmother out of the house. She will never bother us again. Hansel and Gretel showed their father the gold coins they had found. He was delighted. The three of them were never short of money again, and they all lived happily ever after. Choo-choo and Cha-Cha were always very polite. They always spoke kindly to the workers in the house. Good morning! Good morning, kids! Thank you for making our garden so beautiful! You are welcome! But... Kasli was always very rude. Huh? Hey, you! Get out of my way! Huh? Huh? Ew! 
you're so stinky! Huh? Huh? Leave the garden! Now! Huh? Huh? Ew! This soup tastes awful! You're a terrible, terrible cook! Huh? Huh? Cusley's mother was very disappointed in him. She wanted him to be polite and kind and respect everyone. So, one day, she asked the janitor, the garbage collector, the gardener, and the cook not to come to work. Please, take a holiday for a few days. Don't come to work. I want Cusley to learn how important and helpful you all are. The next day, Cusley found that the house was very dirty. Ew! Ugh, there's so much garbage lying around. Where is Steven? Why hasn't he picked it up? Cusley, Steven won't be coming anymore. You will have to clean the house on your own. Huh? And so, Cusley had to clean up his own mess. Uh, this is terrible! All the hard work made Cusley very hungry. He sat at the table and asked for lunch. I'm sorry, Cusley, but Andy won't be coming anymore. You'll have to make your own lunch. What? So, Cusley had to make his own lunch. And when Cusley went to throw the garbage out, he found that the garbage can was already completely full and that it was making everything very stinky. Ew! Where is Sandy? Why hasn't he emptied the garbage can? There's so much garbage in it! It's making everything very stinky! Sandy won't be coming anymore, Cusley. From now on, you'll have to empty the garbage on your own. Huh? And so, Cusley had to empty the garbage can on his own. Ew! This garbage is making me so stinky! Cusley then went to the garden to get some fresh air. But he found that the flowers were drooping and that there were weeds growing all over. Huh? What's happened to the garden? Flowers are drooping. And there are weeds growing everywhere. I'm sorry, Cusley. But Julian won't be coming anymore. You'll have to take the weeds out and water the plants yourself. Huh? And so, Cusley had to look after the garden on his own. Ugh. Ugh. This is so difficult! Where are Steven, Julian, Sandy, and Andy? Why haven't they come today? When will they be back? Cusley, don't you remember? You were very rude to them all. They work very hard for us. I don't think they'll come back 
unless you decide to be polite. Huh? Cusley's mother then helped him to see how hard everyone worked. All these people work so hard for us, Cusley. But you've never cared about them or had a kind word for them. I'm sorry, Mom. I now understand how hard they work. I promise I'll be polite and kind and show them that I care. Please ask them to come back. Hmm. Later that day, Cusley spent his time writing thank you notes. The next morning, Cusley went out with his mother and bought flowers and gifts. And the next day, when Stephen, Julian, Sandy, and Andy came to the house, Cusley spoke to them very politely. Hello, Stephen! This is for you! Thank you for keeping my house clean! Thank you, Cusley. This is for you, Julian. I know that you work very hard to make the garden beautiful. Thank you. Sandy, you are very important. Thank you for taking the garbage away. delicious food you make. And I'm sorry that I was rude to you all. It's okay, Cusley. After that day, Cusley always spoke politely and kindly to all of the workers. His manners made everyone happy. Yummy! And Cusley's mother felt very proud of him. was a fussy little boy. He always complained about everything. Oh! This cushion isn't soft enough. Ew! I don't like this ice cream. Chica, the gift you gave me isn't nice at all. Huh? Cusley's mother was quite worried about him. Cusley grumbles and fusses about everything. He is very rude. He must learn how it makes others feel when he complains <laughs> like that. One day, Cusley's mother came up with an idea. She spoke to Choo Choo and Cusley's other friends. I need your help, children. Cusley's mother then asked Cusley to invite his friends home. Cusley, why don't you invite your friends over tomorrow? You can all play together. I'll help you bake cookies and make chocolate milkshakes. Good idea, Mom! Cusley liked the idea. And so he invited all his friends. Please come over tomorrow. We'll have lots of fun. The next morning, Cusley took out all of his favorite toys and games. We're going to have fun playing with these things. He then baked cookies and made chocolate milkshakes. Mmm! 
Presley then made the living room very comfortable for his friends. Soon, Cusley's friends came by. Hi, Cusley. Hi, everyone. Come on, let's play. Cusley brought his toys and games out. These are my favorite toys and games. Let's play with them. But Chacha and Chica made a fuss. I don't want to play indoors, Cusley. I want to go out. Huh? I don't like your toys and games. They are boring. Huh? Cusley didn't know what to do. He felt like Chacha and Chica were being very fussy. Cusley then brought out the cookies and milkshakes he had made. Everyone, I've baked cookies and made chocolate milkshakes for all of us. I hope you like them. Everyone took a cookie and a milkshake. But to Cusley's surprise, they all started grumbling. This cookie is very hard. This cookie is too soft. My milkshake isn't milky. My milkshake needs more chocolate. Huh? Cusley was very disappointed to see his friends fussing and grumbling so much. All Cusley wanted to do was have fun with his friends. But they kept fussing and complaining about everything. It's cold here! No, it's too hot. I don't like these cushions. They aren't soft enough. Huh? Huh? Cusley couldn't understand why his friends were being so fussy. His head began to spin, and so he sat down and did nothing. Ah! Oh. After Cusley's friends left, Cusley went up to his mother. friends were so fussy today. They complained about everything. I just didn't know what to do. I don't want to be like them. So I'm never going to fuss or grumble again. Cusley's mother's idea had worked. And Cusley never grumbled or fussed about anything again. Chica was a good boy, but he was very lazy when it came to doing his homework. Oh, homework is so boring. Maybe I'll play now and do my homework later. Chica always made excuses when his mother asked him to finish his homework. Chica, please finish your homework. You only have a few problems left. I'll do it later, Mom. I'm really tired now. Chica even made up stories when his teacher asked him to see his homework. Chica, please show me your homework. Uh, uh, my 
dog ate it, Miss Dorothy. Chica's mother met Miss Dorothy one day. She was Chica's favorite teacher. Chica never does his homework, Miss Dorothy. No matter how many times I tell him. I have an idea. We'll do something to make sure Chica always does his homework going forward. Miss Dorothy gave the children homework that day. Children, please be sure to finish your homework today. It's very important. I'll be checking it tomorrow. Yes, Miss Dorothy! But even after Miss Dorothy reminded him, Chica didn't do his homework that day. La la la, la la la. The next day, Miss Dorothy made an announcement to the class. Children, I have a surprise for you. The principal has invited you all to visit the school garden. The school garden? Yes, and you will all learn to be gardeners. <laughs> You'll get special hats and tools and have a chance to do some real gardening. Hooray! The children were excited, especially Chica. He couldn't wait to go to the garden. Gardening was one of his favorite things to do. What time are we going to the garden, Miss Dorothy? Right after I check everyone's homework. The principal said she will only take the children who have completed their homework to visit the garden. So children, please show me your homework. Huh? Chiku and the other children showed Miss Dorothy their homework. I finished my homework, Miss Dorothy. So have we. But Chica hadn't done his homework. Oh, uh, hmm. Huh. And so, Chica was the only one who wasn't allowed to go to the garden. I'd like to be a gardener too, Miss Dorothy. If you do your homework today, Chica, we can all go back to the garden tomorrow. That evening, Chica did his homework on his own. His mother didn't even have to remind him once. The next day, Chica immediately showed his homework to Miss Dorothy. I've done my homework, Miss Dorothy. Great work, Chica. Today, you too will get to be a gardener. Hooray! Miss Dorothy took the class to the garden again. And this time, Chica got a hat and tools as well. And he had fun gardening with all his friends. Hooray! From that day on, Chica did his homework on his own every day. And both Miss Dorothy and Chica's mother felt very proud of him. The old witch locked Hansel up in a cage. Water is very precious.